John Zimmerman with Upper Creek Angler and we're tying through Steve Scoose's book Grayling Flies. This is fly number 54, Pedro's Pink and Gray Nymph. We're going to start with some black thread in the vise. This is on a, I'm tying this on a number 12 jig hook with a three and a half millimeter bead. The original pattern calls for this fly to be tied in sizes 14 and 16 but for um, easy viewing sake, I'm tying it a little bit larger. The tail on this fly is going to be some mallard flank. Um, I think if I were tying it personally, I would use Coq de Leon. Um, you get the same speckling with Coq de Leon that you do with mallard, uh, but the Coq de Leon is just a much tougher material than the um, mallard flank is. But we're going to go in and, and tie this as close to the original pattern as we can get it. So we'll just use that waist to help us with a slight taper build on the fly and go in and cut it out now. The ribbing on this is just um, some standard copper wire. We'll come back to the back and tie our copper wire in. This is a UTC in size brassy. I'm a really big fan of the size small, uh, but on this bigger fly, I went with the brassy size. But I really like size small, especially for um, for natural bodied nymphs like pheasant tails. Um, I'm a really big fan of the small. Now we'll go back in and start tying in our body materials. We're going to use three shades of dubbing here. The first is going to be some UV pink ice dub and we um, we don't want this to be like a uh, he-man super bulky pattern so we'll tie in a, um, a thin noodle if we need to add more we can just remember you're going to be adding in three colors of dubbing as you go up so make sure that you save room for your other dubbing colors. Our next dubbing color is going to be gray. That makes sense since it's called the pink and gray. This is just um, some gray out of a, an SLF synthetic. Any light gray will work. And um, at this point, we will bring our copper wire up to the top. I love multi-toned flies. I think they catch a lot of fish. So I don't think they catch a lot of fish. I know they catch a lot of fish. Love multi-toned flies. Um, I'm going to come in and get that thicker wire out with a pair of uh, broken down scissors. In order to create the bugginess that I'm looking for in the collar on this fly, I'm going to tie the, the collar in via a dubbing noodle, or a dubbing loop, I'm sorry. And we're going to use some black squirrel for this. So we'll prepare our dubbing loop. This is not in the, um, the original instructions but um, to create the same look of the fly that's in the original instructions with some really buggy uh, collar work I, I am going to use a, a dubbing loop to try to replicate that a little bit better Got the, the dubbing in there. We'll give our tool a spin. And now we'll just, um, whoops, that's all we're going to get out of that one. Get the 
tag of the dubbing loop and using a, um, a bodkin or other device really tease out some of these guard hairs and, and other other pieces of hair from that um, the black got a big old clump there. I'm going to cut some of that out and tease and tease just a little bit more on this side so there you have it that is fly number 54 from Steve Scoose's book Grayling Flies Pedro's Pink and Gray Nymph Happy time.